it's really important when you look at the history of deinstitutionalization to really put the people who received mental health services in the community front and center of, of looking at that. And certainly deinstitutionalization and, and community mental health care has, has its deep, deep flaws. But one thing that is really important that came out of deinstitutionalization was um, the notion of, of patients as actors, as patients as um, people with rights, pe people with ideas about what they needed, um, about people who were prepared to be activists. Um, and there's many, many, many um, activist patients, people like David Revel, who was the first um, Canadian politician to be out of the closet as a former mental health patient, and will be receiving his honorary doctorate at Queen's in, um, in June, um, and I'll be there. Um, but there's, uh, when people ha came out of institutions and the focus, the locus, the focus of, of mental health became community-based, it gave people a chance to come together as a social movement. And I think that that has been more or less successful, but one of the greatest success stories in Canada is, in terms of that, is the first group of uh, former mental patients who got together and created their own services in Vancouver in, in the early 1970s, the MPA, or a Mental Patients Association, who created a very innovative and very patient-centered um, program or set of services um, that were in many ways unparalleled to this day. Their success is in many ways unparalleled to this day. And so as one of the founders of the MPA said, Molly Dexel said at the time, we are the sh shadow people. But in a sense, Molly Dexel also illustrates a person that refused to be a shadow person, um, having been institutionalized by her husband many times and receiving apparently as many as a hundred shock therapy treatments. Molly, as an older woman, came out of the of Riverview, joined the MPA, and spent the rest of her life writing and speaking publicly and and working in the system to better the lives of other people who use, who use mental health services. So although people with mental health difficulties still are the shadow people, because we don't institutionalize them, we can't actually ignore them the way that we might have in the past um, before deinstitutionalization. And I think that's probably a good thing.